Hi there. We're high on the hills above Sheffield. It's a place called Clough Hollow. This uh, little um, stream of water is actually the source of one of my favourite rivers, the River Porter. So this film is basically going to be about the River Porter. It's very wet round here at the moment. Um, we've had a lot of rain recently, uh, so the ground is really waterlogged. So I'm going to make my way down a few hundred yards, uh, find a drier spot, and I'll tell you a bit about how I'm going to film it, etc. Now compared to a lot of other rivers like the Trent, the Severn, uh, they're massive rivers. The River Porter is only a small river. It's about five miles in length. Um, but it is steeped in history. There is so much to tell you about it. It's industrial past mainly. So what I've decided to do, there's too much to do in one video to do it justice. So I'm going to do it over two videos. This first video will probably cover the first three miles as the Little Porter Brook makes its way that makes its way down through the leafy suburbs of Sheffield. Beautiful walk. Um, walked it for many years, and I dare say I'll be walking it for another 20 years at least. But it is a lovely walk. Now the second video, which I'm hoping to do next week, will be totally different. As the uh, River Porter enters Sheffield, you lose sight of it. It basically goes underground in a series of culverts. Basically, it becomes a subterranean river going through, through Sheffield. Many people do not see it. It just disappears from view. Anyway, that's for next week. I'll, I'll leave that for the time being, but it takes an unbelievable route. Um, we'll leave that till next week. That will be really exciting. So, continuing on today, we're now going to follow the, uh, the river down through Porter Clough um, for about a good half a mile through a series of beautiful little waterfalls, etc. So we'll make our way down the river now. We've, uh, we've dropped down Porter Clough and as you can see the, the river's broadened out a bit as the land's got a bit flatter. Still walking alongside the river. Like I mentioned, uh, this river is steeped in history. If you went back to the 1850s, uh, like the Industrial Revolution time, on the River Porter, there were 
21 mill ponds driving 19 water wheels and those water wheels in turn they powered rolling mills, corn mills, forge hammers and sheds uh, they were called hulks that uh, contained all the grinding wheels that they used in the cutlery industry and basically that's what made um, Sheffield famous it was the powerhouse of Sheffield was the river porter producing all that steel and um, that is why Sheffield became known as the steel city anyway a lot of those mill ponds have now gone uh, been filled in there's uh, probably over half a dozen remaining um, you could basically say all the water wheels have gone but not all of them Anyway, we're going to head on down here and we'll come to Forge Dam. That's one of the uh, remaining mill ponds. This is uh, Forge Dam. As you can see, it's uh, silted up somewhat now, but it didn't used to be like that. Um, I learned to kayak here in the Scouts 50 years ago. Uh, they had rowing boats on it. Oh, it was a great place to play. Anyway, uh, history-wise, in 1765, there was a water wheel and that powered a forge in a rolling mill. So it was sort of the early start of the steel industry in the, the Porter Valley. Anyway, we'll wander around and uh, have a look at the weir. That's looking at uh, the weir at uh, Forge Dam. If we pan over here, we can see there's a lovely cafe there. And further on, it was the, um, the Forge workers, their cottages. I think the cafe was uh, part of the Forge and then uh, converted into a, a cafe many many years ago I think anybody who's uh, lived around this area of the city will know Forge Dam we either played in the play area played in the river damming it up or played on the rowing boats on the dam itself we all remember this area from our childhood I've pushed a pram along here many a time, many a time. It's the main route between Wire Mill and Forge. I can remember pushing a pram backwards and forwards along here. Anyway, back to the river. The river is down in the bottom there. We've left it briefly. Most mill dams are fed by what is called a goit, a little tributary and that's what we've got here but this is an exceptionally long one it's about 400 yards long so it means the dam can be positioned quite high up so there's a good head of water to drive a bigger water wheel anyway gonna head on now to wire mill dam this is wire mill dam now Again, if you were around here in the 60s and 70s, you would remember that this was a mecca for radio-controlled boats. There were boats of every type on here, from yachts to speedboats to battleships, you name it, there was every boat here. It was a great day out for a young boy. Anyway, if we just swing the camera around here, you can see down there in the bottom that is a monument to Thomas Bullsover. Now he invented Sheffield Plate 
uh, that was an early form of silver plating from that he manufactured uh, all sorts of goods but particularly buttons um, so he could make them at a fraction of the price of a solid silver button anyway I'll just bring the camera back around to the dam now if you remember when we walked down that goit I said this dam was very high up um, they raised it probably about 40 or 50 feet up from the river itself and because of that it could drive a big water wheel and in uh, 1769 there was uh, rolling mills here and they that was driven by two uh, massive water wheels they were 34 feet in diameter uh, by just over four feet across those were the biggest wheels uh, biggest water wheels in Sheffield so you can see how the steel industry was developing early in Sheffield and how basically it became famous for steel so we'll carry on now making our way further down the river Very tranquil scene, isn't it? Uh, it could be from 200 years ago. Anyway, this is a shepherd's wheel dam. The only difference with this one is that this is a working dam and that is a working water wheel. So come with me and we'll go and have a look. The building alongside me is known as Shepherd's Wheel. The building was here in 1500, so it's very old. In uh, 1749, there was a water wheel on site, and uh, Mr. Shepherd took the business over. Now, there were 10 troughs. The trough is where you have your grinding wheel. So he could employ 10 men. Uh, they were basically employed mainly in the manufacture of size and farm machinery. Later on, he would have turned more to cutlery, to which Sheffield was famous. And that carried on for many years, till 1930, when the, the water wheel closed. Anyway, it was like that for a long time, and then with the aid of lottery money, they managed to refurbish all the machinery, the water wheel, got it all working again, and it was opened in April 2012. So if you come with me, I'll show you it working, and it's just like it was 200 years ago. This is the water wheel which is driven by the water from the dam. Nice fire going in here. That's the power from the water wheel outside being transferred to the grinding wheels inside by a series of gears and uh, pulleys.
in this workshop you can see where the the man would have sat um, straddling that bench enable him to, to use the grinding wheel from here we're going to now head further down the river Right, uh, this is the final dam of uh, this section of the walk. Uh, this is Ibbotson Wheel Dam, a really old dam. This uh, dates from the 1500s. Um, it is showing a few signs of leaking, so it looks like they're on with uh, repairing it at the moment. But uh, I remember this, remember this dam from my childhood. I was born in the houses across the road uh, on Oakbrook Road. So we spent a lot of our childhood playing around here. Uh, we used to fish for stickle bikes and bullheads with fishing nets all along the edge. I also remember playing on the ice as well when we were very young. Uh, scary now. Anyway, um, the final section of river is just round the corner here. I parked my car there earlier on. A little bit different so I've got to go and change my footwear into something more suitable and I'll see you further down the river right uh, I've got me footwear change, got my waders on now, I've got my torch, got my walking pole. As you can see, the river goes under Oakbrook Road now in a culvert. Now like I say, we are following the river porter all the way down, so come on, let's do this bit. Beautiful under here. We're actually underneath Oakbrook Road now. Now, I looked on a map, an 1850s map, and the culvert wasn't on, but on a, a later map it was. So I rank this was built about 1860s, 1870s. Beautifully constructed, the skill that must have gone into to building this. It's all made out of dressed stone the roof, the walls and even the floor it's all made out of stone did it, it's beautiful anyway, um, I have had a few problems with uh, the lighting and the audio for the lighting I've ended up using an LED floodlight that seems to work okay after altering some settings on the camera and for the audio, I have problems where the microphone is picking up the noise of the water and not my voice. So, it seems to be working okay. If it gets really noisy, I might have to use a handheld microphone. So, be filming it like this, it does not show the beauty of the place up. So what I've also done, I've taken some still photographs using the light, the torch painting technique. So what I'll do, I'll leave you to look at those photographs. I'm gonna carry on to the end of the, the culvert. At the end, I'll talk to you about the next video. Um, that is gonna be amazing. We sort of come as far as I wanted to on the river port on this video. So. I'll talk to you about the, the next section when we get to the end, so I'll see you in a bit. This picture really shows up the culvert. Uh, I did this with light painting. 
You can see all the dressed stone. This other picture here, you can see it's like a, a little culvert, uh, a little land drain coming in at the side. But look how, it, how well it's constructed, um, brick si uh, stone sides with a curved uh, brick roof, looks really nice. Um, I basically filmed this bit just to give you a taster of what's to come in the next video. From here, the, uh, the River Porter flows on down through Encliffe Park. Well, on the next video, we're going to pick it up at the end of the park at Hunter's Bar. Got about two miles to run from there. One mile of it is just through a few culverts, little ones like these, few bridges. And then as it gets near to the city, it basically goes underground for nearly the last mile. That's the interesting bit. It goes through a series of culverts, and we're gonna follow those all the way through to its meeting point with its sister river, the River Sheep. Anyway, that will be on the next video. It is out of this world. It's a, it's a real adventure. I'm not going to tell you any more now. So, hope you've enjoyed this one. Sort of like a taster of what's to come. I'll uh, probably film it in the next few days. I've already wrecked it, so I know I can get through. So, I'll be filming it in the next couple of days, then putting it on probably not long after this one. So, I'll see you on the next video.